Hello, it's Antoinette here. Um, oh look, I'm going to attempt to do something not anywhere near as articulate as Elaine does at Tarot Tats and Tea, but I'm going to attempt to articulate where I'm at in my ancestral grimoire journey uh, so far in 2023. Um, so Elaine, as I've said, Tarot Tats and Tea, I'll pop her um, video link to this down below. Um, completely lost my train of thought there with uh, Marjorie playing up, but um, I'll link videos below. Um, she does a much better job of this than me, but she's inspired me to pick up these books and have a go for myself too. However, um, I'm nowhere near as, as I say, articulate, artistic and creative as she has been. But I just want to give you um, a little tour of where we're at and what's going on. Some of the information, as you know, is going to be personal that's in my book, so some of it I will read out off you know, so you can't see it on screen. I will give you a quick flip through of how basic this kind of journaling is for me. It's nothing like my usual reflections journals, so be warned. Um, and I followed Elaine doing the previous um, Ancestral Paths book and some of the spreads that she shared from the book, and I did some of those, and that's how I decided this was um, going to be something for me as well. Now, this book is by Nancy Hendrickson. Um, you do not have to do the first book to do the second book. But of course, for many people, they feel that that is the correct way of doing things. So um, by all means, carry on. There isn't a dead start for when you should do this either. So um, I thought it kind of started at the beginning of the year. So I got it in in time to start. And I've sort now kind of realised that's not so. I can do it as and when. So I can actually use it and take two years if I want to. I grabbed a basic A5 jotter. Um, and this is where I've been making my notes and my rough notes. And I've even done um, how to find the um, birth card of the year in the back there, um, which I've been doing for a few people. So, uh, yeah, when I say jotter, it's a rough jotter. And then it'll all be transcribed into perhaps another book that I have um, once I've sort of pulled all my notes together and understand what I'm talking about. So I have a deck of cards here marking the page that I want to get to. So we just come and um, have a little look through where we're at. So it has um, a really nice kind of introduction. And again, Elaine does this beautifully. So I'm not going to attempt to do what she does. But she goes through the foreword and she explains the journey that we're maybe going to have as we go through. Um, the bit about the introduction is there. Now, for the most part, for all of us, we've kind of got to this point of using this book because we have some type of magic within us. Whether we choose to recognise it or not is a different matter, but the point is that we've got here. So that's how we've got here, is by whether that is through just reading cards, divination, uh, gut instinct, clairknowing, clairvoyance, clairsentience. There is a bit here about before you begin your journey. And she suggests that, you know, you're going to need some tools. So you're definitely going to need some cards. You're going to need a book, some pens, obviously this book, um, something to write in. Um, and there are some questions to do. So I did do these bits at the start. So I started with, you know, my journey began. So I started this in December, as in pulling all my stuff together. Um, and you can see, right, I was playing with pens because I didn't realise how absorbent this paper was. So my normal pens is really quite um, feathered, the writing. It looks really, really bad. I mean, I have bad handwriting and this just makes it look even worse and it bleeds straight through the paper, as you can see. So on day one of questions, um, we're also working out what we're going to need. So on this first day of working with Ancestral Grimoire, I believe my most potent form of magic is blank. Um, and then that is for you just to write about your own personal magics. And um, from the very young age of, I don't know, probably nine or ten, divination with a needle and thread was my oldest and the strongest form of tool that I use. And to this day, I will still use a needle and thread for a pendulum over a pendulum. Um, and it works best for me. Uh, gold chain and a ring or a necklace and ring, you know, straight off my person again would work better for me than pendulums do usually. Um, so what have I put here? Let's just have a quick look. So storytelling and pictures unlock words of wisdom that allow me to see into myself that which I fail to realise. Um, these are things. Is true magic 
and glitter that which lies in the mind question mark heart question mark compassion and humanity can be very powerful and herein is true magic so that's one of the things that i feel about me that is some of my most potent forms of magic so divination needle and thread um unlocking pictures stories and then um my humanity and compassion to others and here i've written some things to me that i see around me so i've put the bumblebee who chooses to sit on my arm um, the painted lady who flutters to capture my attention the robin who sings his joyful song in the winter and we have um, the tickle on the right side of my head that i feel regularly so those are some of the things that i get there was another card here so why are you here and then it says draw a card um and then you have like a discovery so I've two cards so one is why I, why am i here and i've got the root of wands um and that is the knight of wands for anyone wondering and i kind of see that as a kind of maverick type card um so the magnetic attraction learning by trial and error that's why i'm here i learn by doing rather than being told um so through experience and then um, my failings with that though are failings to hear focus or develop i may need to try a different approach sometimes perhaps i can't always do it by learning myself and the card that I got with it was the um, Eight of Stones. Uh, so that one I put down as a discovery. So connection, grounding, earthing, tapping into connection, magic and wisdom. To learn, to listen to the trees. Feel the winds in my hair. Understand growth, gardening, healing. Health issues. Help my own soul become still and listen to what is trying to be said. And that was what I got with those cards. And those ones I used the Gentle Tarot um, for that spread. Now, in the book, um, Nancy talks about tools to use. So you have your backpack of items. So I started writing down my backpack of items. Interestingly, I didn't come back to reread this. I just started gathering them to see how many actually made it into my backpack, so to speak. The pendulum with needle and thread hasn't yet. I do have a um, pendulum, but not that one. Um, so I might swap out for that one. We'll see. And one of the tarot decks I'm choosing to use is the Celtic Tarot. And Nancy talks in this book about splitting your deck into three parts. So courts, majors and minors. And your court cards are basically going to bring the person or the ancestor that's coming through. So if you don't know instantly through divination or through um, meditation or, you know, your own um, intu intuition, you can pull a card. The majors will tell you the energy that's being shared with you by the court card, by the person that's coming through. And then the minors are kind of, what can you teach me about your magic, what you're bringing through, what I'm seeing from the major card, what can you teach me with the minors? And there's always um, the intention setting. So Nancy talks a lot about intention setting. She's very big on it. Um, and your intentions do need to be clearly focused. I have kind of written down an idea here about what we're kind of like um, doing so it's a good idea to ask your ancestor to keep watch over you and protect you from any entity which is a lower vibration than yourself and does not have your highest um, intentions are good at all times when you're working this kind of energy um other ideas for focus intentions to bring clear messages so you're wanting like i invite an ancestor who can help with i.e health issues or who can help with letting go of grief around like loss of grandparents or who can help me to understand how to work the land so very clear questions is um one of the things that she says here then there is uh, meeting the ancestors so we've got tools of divination building look part one is setting into your astral realm she does talk about um how to get into there there are ways of doing this through as i said meditation journeying through your tarot cards Having somewhere to start so we have meet the ancestors so we're here part two courts 101 so um it talks about ranks of the um oh courts so we've got the page the knight the queen the king your learners youthful enthusiasms your questers action orientated your nurturers who are attendants and your rule makers who enforce the rules and then to match that with the elements so fire passion water emotions air thinker earth practical and then you have like the shadow sides of your courts as well, for things that you don't see. Then there is this really nice little grimoire where you can make notes there. And if you can um, annotate somebody you know to them in your family or ancestral realm that you might recognise the traits of, you can put that in here as well. So that's another really good thing to do. Um, and then we had um, meeting the ancestors. And then she does talk about the court cards separately one by one bringing forwards um how she sees them how she sees the um 
characteristics. So if you get stuck, there's that to do as well, um, just to give you like a jumping off point. And then we have the spread here where we're asking for an ancestor. So um, I got, so we have card one. So I got the king of cups as my court card. And my question here, so I asked a question. So I think for um, throughout the book, Nancy talks about magical skills. So what was one of your magical skills? They may have had more than one. The uh, number two, sorry, I'm just um, reading here. So number two, the ancestor you've already drawn the court card. And numbers three, four and five are what can you teach me about your magic? So I think there was another spread just before all of this that I might have missed. I'm just having a quick peek here. Yes, there is. So before I got to this part, there was a spread um, earlier on in Meeting an Ancestor where you pulled a major, a court and a minor. And my court card was the King of Cups. So I already knew when I got to this spread, um, the ancestor that you've already drawn, that was the King of Cups. So the card two was my King of Cups. Um, and my King of Cups originally came through bringing um, na natural magic, basically is what they brought through to me. So I had written a bit about that. Then when it came to here, so this is my rough sketch of the spread. So here's my King of Cups I already knew about. So um, what was one of your magical skills? I got strength, I think. Yeah, I previously had magical skills as strength there as well to like run it home to me um so number two so my we'll start here right so card one one of your magical skills so um connecting to nature animals companions animal healer kindness patience strength of um character is what i've got for that one number two we have masters so this is my king of cups the ancestor that i've already drawn so he's a rule maker he's an enforcer He's a master of skills, psychic abilities. Card three, four and five. What can you teach me about your magic? So here I had um, seven of swords, nine of cups and ace of cups. And um, I've got here wisdom of ages, learnt lessons, stillness and peace with um, learning to work with water, protection, purity of essence. If you wish to learn, you are willing to be taught. Um, I don't know where I got that from, but I've wrote it down. And then we have the ace here. So I've got runes, cauldron. So I've written down some runes that popped out of a card to me. Um, I've got lotus flowers. I've put sacred waters, scrying and healing. So there is an element here of um, magical abilities, but definitely intuition based because we have cups and it comes from the cups. And interestingly, my actual question, I think um, originally related from not necessarily magical ability, but psychic abilities. So who better to get out than the King of Cups for your psychic abilities? Um, so that sort of made sense to me. And then the needs for you know, stillness, water protection. To me, those are all things that go hand in hand with protection. We have um, meeting the ancestors. So we've got a bit more here. So I think this is um, just one of Nancy's ex explanations. Then she goes through like the first science, season, sabbats, um, working through monthly. So... Um, Again, as you work through monthly, I have chosen to continue to work with my decks split into three as courts made to the minors. I have spare decks with me um, and I also have my cherrywood pendulum. And then I made my extra deck to go with this. So in here it does talk about making extra decks. Uh, it talks about working with the equinoxes, solstices, months. And I've gone for months. So um, I'm not worried about this. I'm not really worried about this. And I'm not particularly worried about this, um, the way that I'm doing it. We have the land of tarot meeting your 78. Um, this really is more about journeying into the land of tarot and journeying into your cards. I'm no good at journeying into cards. So again, that wasn't for me. So I've ignored that. I've read it, but it's not for me. We have some stuff here about the tools. 
So this was quite interesting. And in here, Nancy talks about the decks that she uses and she gives you some examples of decks that you might want to use. And she also talks about supplementary cards and making your own supplementary deck, which we're getting to. So I'll be able to show you those. Um, she talks about working with the pendulum, configuring your pendulum and ways of using it. Now, I'll be honest, um, up until now, I've only used yes and no's. I've never thought of creating pendulum boards. So I've seen them around. I've never looked at any. I've never seen any close up. So um, we have some of that going on now. Um, oracle cards and how you might want to use them and creating your kind of own oracles or castings and sigils. Now, again, all of this is up to you. You do not have to use all of this. And I, again, have chosen not to um, right now. Uh, Lenormand I'll never use for this because I don't understand the deck. Um, and then we have your creating your ancestors um, grimoire and off you go. So you do not have to know them by DNA. You might only know these people by the cards and through the magic. Um, now in our DNA per se, we have like, um, she talks about this kind of, let me just read this out. We have an incredible, incredible capacity for tapping into genetic memory. I know that sitting around a campfire on the chilliest of autumn nights is comfortingly familiar because we have a genetic or ancestral memory of doing the same thing all the way back to the days when we first discovered fire. Now, that's a really good example of um, genetic DNA and memory. So I don't know about you, but I actually really enjoy sitting out in the campfire. I enjoy looking at the stars. Um, in here, she also talks about um, how the stars affect her and something that would have happened early on in your childhood that's grabbed your memory, your attention, your focus and remains with you today. Although it might not be your source of income, it's something that still fascinates you. And for me, I remember being given a girl guidebook when I was probably about eight or nine and it had um, information on how to make bits of equipment to take with you into, you know, on your camping trips in order to set up and make life easier for yourself and it also had a map of the sky and that map of the sky was the one that really got my focus and to this day i enjoy sitting outside by the fire looking up at a beautiful clear sky and looking at the um stars and usually i have orion or orion's belt above me um and sometimes he disappears and sometimes he comes back and i do take um note of that and equally, it was the North Star, I think, which also fascinated me as a young person. And the fact that you can um, be guided by it and follow it and navigate your way home. Um, all things that I've not tried because I don't like getting lost. But um, I haven't actually tried following that North Star yet. Perhaps one day. So that's some of the things. Now here, um, Nancy talks about cards that might hold your ancestors. So you can do your daily divination or your daily draws. And for her, it was the Six of Cups. So for me, what I did was I took um this deck tower of strange sprouts or antlers and i went through the deck one by one and i pulled out well actually no first of all i shuffled the deck and asked what card represents my ancestors and i'll be honest i got the devil um and i wasn't 100 percent sure i can't say that i could connect 100 percent with this card so i then went through one by one and i pulled out um any card that i felt that reminded me or had a representation of an ancestral energy and I had seven further cards that I got out I put them all face down I put seven out on the table and then I used a pendulum to go over them and ask is this the card of my ancestors is this the card that represents when my ancestors have a message for me is this the card and so on and so forth until I got one card and now I didn't know what the card was until I turned it upright and it is hiding in here I don't know where it is because this card this deck is so hard for me to um flip through but bizarrely, it was actually the Six of Cups. Okay, so the Six of Cups in this deck became my ancestors' deck, my ancestors' card. So if I have a message from my ancestors, it's going to be the Six of Cups. And that is actually, there it is. So it's that one. And I think you can see, I mean, it's got picture frames. So there's kind of that like energy going through there. Um, now, that was completely, completely fluke. Nancy's card is the Six of Cups. I don't know what deck she uses, but I don't think it's this one. Um, so I thought that was fascinating. Now what she says as your daily draws are, every morning you'll ask your ancestors for the message that they have for you in how to use their magic or bring the magic into your daily practice. How can you do this? And you'll shuffle your deck every, every morning, um, you know, like so. 
and then you just need to take a few moments you need to focus and then you draw down through the deck so then what you do is you're looking for your six of cups um, this is going to take a long time so let's see if we can speed up I know it's not quite as magical because you haven't got the sound, but uh... Six is there, but not the six that I want. If this works, okay. So we have the six of cups, and the card beneath it is the card for your message. So there we have um, quite a strong one. So we have the six of cups with the five of cups. So quite a strong image actually should we bring that one up to show you so what they're trying to tell me about bringing it into my daily practice so here we have I think what we're doing here is so out of your tears grows strength um, so it's not necessarily telling me to cry but it's perhaps telling me to look for the strength and the growth in um, the sadness uh, this particularly to me is talking to me about um, the sadness that I still feel for the loss of my gran and um, we're coming up basically to her year's anniversary so she's very much on my mind at the moment um, to the point where I've been actually looking into ancestral well not ancestral but I'm looking into a lot of kind of folklore and traditions around um, the country that she came from and um, so yeah I have been spending a lot of time doing that but not trying not to be sad about it I've been trying to do it the other way around I've been trying to do it with happiness and joy in my heart and that connection and the fact that I now am more enriched in what I find and the knowledge that I get so yeah so I think that with this with the incorporation is about the growth that you can bring through the sadness and the sorrows that you've had and um, so that would be what I'll be looking at and maybe I'll be going to water the plants that are around my house <laughs> um, before they dry out so I do have some cactuses which again um, she had lots of cactus around cacti around her house and in her conservatories and I have some here so um that that to me would speak to that now for you that might say something completely different but the point to this is you use the cards for your intuitive reading with the image the symbolism rather than just your standard tarot so that's the daily thing that you'll do with these cards and of course when I put them back into my deck because otherwise it's going to come out exactly the same isn't it so I do make sure that they go back into my deck always separate so if they come out again as a pair I know it's an intended message so that's um finding out what card does what for me and then we're into January so let me just find where we are a few pages away so reviewing the tools so I've got my tools set up and in here we talk about, um, so I've got tarot and pendulum, not quite sidewalk oracles, but I do have an oracle deck. And then we have like um, your integration of your magic. So January was about inherited magic for the most part. So what did they, you know, what have they gifted you? Where did it come from and how are you going to work with it? So I did this with pulling three cards. Um, I didn't do the journeying bit. I did the three cards. So I pulled my three cards. And then I will show you the spread actually that I got. And then um, this is how to pull out what you've got. So I have written that down as well. So, you know, who appeared for you? How, was it card or visualisation? Um, taking note of it being upright or reversed. What century of person's from? So I'll talk about that in a minute. And how you interpreted this card as a magical person in your um, life. And then paying attention to the cards that come out, the suit of the, cu the cards. Um, and then using um, like pendulum boards to get more answers for you, practicing your skills for sightseeing and what's around you, your kind of, um, what do you call it? Your outside oracle, basically, your sidewalk oracle. 
and then there are some questions to ask your card which I have done and then drawing um, a kind of card or an index card or some description for you so if we move that out of the way let's come in here okay let's talk about these ones first so the extra cards in the deck or my tools so the tools so extra cards in the deck so i have um from the alley man hence the packet i got the blank cards and i have used them to put them to good use so i have drawn a card for each century so you've got 21st and then i have drawn the years on them to remind me for two reasons one i can use my pendulum over them to see what year or what decade um, we're looking at for an estimation of birth and the other thing was with that I was then going to write information onto them but I don't know that that's going to quite work because if I'm talking about people from all around the world the decade or the century doesn't give me enough information because I was going to use it to prompt me like you know the 19th century this 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 and this happened but I don't think that's going to like I said I don't think it's going to quite cut it for um, the diversity of my family. So I have done these, as you can see, from the 21st century, so from 2020 backwards to the 13th century. And then beyond the 13th century, I have called them an ancient one. So that's anyone who's born before um, the 1200s. So that's my dated cards. There. Then I did, um, so I want to know who I'm talking to. So is it a paternal family member? Are they from past life? So that could be an ancestor or somebody who was close to me in a past life. It doesn't have to be a family bloodline member. That might be, um, you know, a loved one, a karmic friend, somebody who I'm kind of bonded to throughout my lifetimes and my journeys. Are they a grandparent? And again, I will, I've left the gaps. So I can either put images or I can put um, information on them. Are they perhaps an aunt or an uncle? Are they a maternal family member? And then I have two other cards here. Are they feminine or are they masculine in energy? Because going back throughout the ages, um, I'm feeling like these are gonna be family members of some description to me. And um, for the most part, they're gonna be family members of, you know, related to me through bloodline um, but of course when we've got past life it could be that they are you know again somebody a friend a lover a loved one somebody past so it's nice to know what sort of energy we're talking to um, working with um, so we've done ancient ones yes yeah, so I think that's all of my cards so let's just put them away so we have my extra pack of cards as my tools, so that's tool number one. Tool number two is the Universal Celtic Tarot, which I've already talked about. Tool number three, um, I was using this pendulum board. So this is a travel altar. I've got some stones in the quarters, just as I felt like putting them on. And I had some incense burning on there earlier. Um, but I have to say the one that I had with this absolutely stinks. I'll be throwing it in the bin. I'm just getting some new ones. And then I have the um, little, I, don't, I can't remember if this is apple wood or cedar wood, I'll be honest. I need to go back and check. Um, pendulum that came with this. So this is the pendulum that I was using today to ask the questions on my cards. So when I laid out my cards in front of me and said, you know, are you the um, card with the message or are you the ancestor with the message? I just waited for it to do its yes and no's and then um, I went through them that way it takes a time okay it does take a time so there's my tools okay what did we get and what were my questions so from the major arcana today We had the page of wands. Sorry, major arcana, my court cards. 
from the major arcana today two cards came out i had the hanged man and i had the fool And then from my minor arcana, we had the three of pentacles. Now I could pull more than one, but I chose to pull just the one card today. So we had those. So with my page of pentacles, so who am I talking to? So I've got page of pentacles. I wanted to go a bit deeper with this and know more about them. So um, I then asked, are you male or female? And I got female energy with my extra card. I also asked, are you from my maternal or, you know, paternal side of the family? Or, you know, where in my past life were you? Um, and that was over a couple of the cards. And I got from the paternal family side. And then I asked, um, you know, what century were you born? And we got the 15th century. I then used my pendulum to ask which decade were you born and which decade did you die? And this person is, um, so this person, basically they passed away or they were born in the 1400s. I don't know when in the 1400s, but the 1400s. And they passed away in um, the 1440s. I also then asked what part of the world are they from and they said that they are from Sweden and that was as far into it as I got because that took quite a while to get that far so um, I know which bloodline I'm looking at I know which family line I'm looking at um, I know that it's my grandfather's family line and not my grandmother's family line on my paternal family side as well i've done that through the um pendulum and like i said and i also know now that they're swedish um what kind of gifts are they bringing forth and we have the hanged man and the fool and i've put down here there's that kind of archetypal magical intentions here of um sacrifice exploring roaming the lands, foraging, perhaps seeing without seeing. Um, so I like that knowing, seeing without seeing, like the knowing. We can see them very clearly here, harnessing some lightning in their hands, so harnessing the magic, the wands for me is that very spiritual-esque card as well, like going out on your quests and your journeys, learning how to harness things. Um, here we have the same light there in the heart, which is why I did the seeing without seeing. So when you're hanging upside down, the perspective, taking a perspective, a different way of looking at things. And with our fall, we have the beautiful um, rainbows, that lighthearted step forwards. We've got working with the um, herbs foraging, actually. So mushrooms often, to me, feel like foraging. We've got the digitalis on his head as well. So again, that has a magical element of working with herbs. So very much a land, very land, very earth-based here is the feeling of um, the magic that they might be bringing forwards. And then, um, you know, what can you tell me about it? And I've got the Three of Pentacles. So for the Three of Pentacles, I'm thinking, again, you can see very clearly here, we have land, we have stones in the sky, pentacles are earth-based anyway. Um, so I have written, you know, like money, manifestation, working perhaps with earth spirits, um, equally with all of this and all the greenery going on. We've got gardening, that kind of cultivation, crops, perhaps managing the earth, being a farmer maybe, maybe they're a, a land person. But going back into the 1400s, that's highly likely anyway. They would have done a lot of um, creating on their own land. So these cards aren't too far stretched of the imagination. And as I said, you are taking up your visual cues from the cards and the imagery, um, more so perhaps than just the titles and the meanings of the cards. Let me just have a quick sip of coffee. So the other question I asked them is, what did um, I get from you? And so I've calibrated my pendulum here and then I've just drawn out a little grid and I was just thinking of lots of things. So I've never done this um, and I will say that it didn't work for me. So storytelling, manifesting, medium, psychic, healing, herbs, cooking, relations, candle magic, crystal spells, crafting, protection, animal whisperer. 
those are some of the things that came to mind that I wanted to know. So putting it here and waiting for it to head in a direction doesn't work. What I did have to do was how, hold my pendulum over each one and ask, and I got my yes and no that way. Now I only got as far as um, healing um, because it was taking so long. So it gave me um, it gave me a maybe with manifesting, but it gave me a yes on medium, a less, yes on psychic, and a yes on healing. So those three are the ones that I've written down for the moment as a definites. And um, I will need to come back and carry on that little journey that I was doing with these cards. Now then, there are extra questions that went with these. And for that, I did use the Gentle Tarot. Pocket version. Um, so question one. Why have I inherited this magic? And I kind of did it this way. So why have I inherited this magic? And I've got Ace of Cups. So I'm thinking that, you know, looking at this cup here, and we've got Little Bird, and then I'm thinking Sidewalk Oracle. My house is surrounded with little garden birds of all varieties at the moment. In fact, they're so quick, most of them, I can't even tell you what they are. I can't focus on them long enough, but I hear them. They sing to me every morning and have done throughout winter. They haven't actually migrated out of the garden. They've remained all winter. So Ace of Cups, I've put here to help nourish the soul. Um, helping me to listen, understand, perhaps listen to the birds that sing around me. Um, also, with the three of pentacles, this also helps to nourish the soul. You also need water to nourish your crops. Just a FYI for anyone that doesn't know that. Um, quite an obvious thing. So yeah, why have I inherited this magic? So I'm guessing it's to help others around me. Then how can this magic impact my everyday life? And I've got the... Ten of Cups. Um, so if I actually bring this one up, because they are quite small images, aren't they? So with my Ten of Cups, you can see we've got this beautiful nest here with the birds, and we've got the rainbows and all the flowing water, and everyone looks very um, content and happy. And I like the fact that the rainbows matched. So um, I have written, there's like this element of positivity, happiness, contentment, commitment to home and happiness. Maybe even feathering the nest. Perhaps that's what um, the magic can do to impact my everyday life. Maybe it will help me to be just, uh, you know, more positive in my environment around me. And then the next question is, how can I work with you improving my skills? So I'm asking directly over here, how can I work with you improving my skills? And we got the um, six of stones or six of pentacles. So instantly I went to the red card, the red um circle in the hand here and with this one I have it read so what does that mean to me that signifies grounding earthing using what I already have around me what resources I have around me that are free it doesn't always have to come from somewhere so these are already in my hand and this is on the floor so what is around me and what can I use in order to um, work to improve my skills so I'm thinking and that again links right back into all of the messages here that I'm seeing personally about connecting to the earth working with what's around me, working with the environment, working with the land. Um, so there's plenty out there when you go foraging that you can use. Now, in what way can I incorporate this magic into my established practice? For this, I got the Seven of Cups. And um, instantly we're pointing at the fire, the face is lit by fire. And um, next to that, I can see that we have the smoke that's rising. And I also see that we have a little um, herb here growing. So um, first things I've got is so colour orange. So I've written down fire, solar plexus, sacral chakra. What do those chakras mean to me? Desires. Um, back to the night of one, uh, page of wands. Desires. Wands, fire suit, desires. Desires. So I've written um, that down. And then linking into them intentions intuition we are coming into spring now so welcoming spring with the fire so we've just had in bulk which is one of the fire um oh what do you call it sabbats cross quarters um candle mass that type of thing you know lighting a fire lighting a candle lighting your first fire in the hearth setting your intentions making your intentions for the new spring that's coming to um, grow for the season so there's that there with um, how can I incorporate it into my established magic so I'm thinking about setting intentions desires what I want for the next three months ahead 
And then how do I use this magic? This was very interesting. I have to think about this. So I got the devil and um, <laughs> this is a hard one, right? So he's pulling something behind him, but his feet are lit up on his path. And that was where I focused here. So with your footsteps, every step you take, it is, oh, what's that say? It is innate. So it is already innate in every foot that, footstep that I take. The magic is already there. It's already within me. It's already being set. Um, perhaps I'm learning to actually use it to control it, maybe, because the element of control with the devil, but I'm definitely bringing it with me. So I'm not leaving it behind. I'm bringing it with me. I'm bringing it through a doorway. I'm bringing it into the open. I'm so I'm bringing it out. This is how I'm using it. Um, freeing my boundaries, perhaps, because I've broken free of this low threshold and I'm out into the open. So that was um, some of the ways in which I was using the, the spread today. And the other card that it did suggest um, was that you could ask to pull for a herb if you've got like a herb magic or an outside magic or a green fingered type of magic coming through your cards, you could pull a herb. So I um, pulled the herbal astrology deck. Uh, I don't know what I feel about this deck, if I'm very honest, at this point in time. It was brand new. I hadn't really used it. I liked the images, but I'm finding it very difficult because it kind of means nothing to me. <laughs> um, however, the card was pretty good. I got Carver Carver, which is community. So this is the um, deck that I've got here. We have some symbols there for our astrology. Um, we have a moon there as well. And I like the blue butterfly that kind of is symbolistic of the person and the area of the world and the colour of the flag that I pulled here today. So we have like some colour symbol there. And that butterfly is also, um, it looks just like the butterfly, which is um, the butterfly of my grand's country. So yes, yeah, so there's elements in here which did match, even though this whole card is related to the other half of the world, like, you know, not even close to where I come from. <laughs> um, and let's just read out about this. So in, in the book, which is by Adriana Ayals, Ayales, and the artwork is by Josephine Clerks. It tells you who they are on the back. So this person's worked in the rainforest, this person's um, Swedish folk herbalist. And you get the upright meaning of your card which is celebration, kinship with tribe, community, friendship, union, finding your chosen family. And then it tells you a lot about, um, so I think this is a Polynesian herb, which I, again, don't know anything about. So it's good for education. It'll tell me about um, other parts of the world and their plants and things, but it's not going to be something I'm going to use as a plant, if that makes sense. So I'm not going to use that plant to connect to, but the message behind the plant is um, pretty much okay, I think. So the carver's energy moves through our nervous system like a butterfly relaxing, hence the butterfly in the card. Um, you might be amid an important moment in your life. Remember that you don't have to do it alone. When you widen your circles internationally, you receive support from the universe and others who join you. So that's quite interesting because obviously I have widened my circle internationally here. We are now in Sweden <laughs> from the UK um, and this person's going to support me in what we're up to. We've also got here, are you a protector, a creator, a connector, or a visionary? And so what did I say at the start of my thing? I felt like um, one of my abilities, my ability before I even started this was, um, uh, what did I put? Storytelling, pictures, unlocking the words of wisdom, allowing me to see into myself that which I failed to realise. So, uh, you know, there are parts of this card that just were like, yeah, that's quite uncanny. How does this correlate this moment in your life alongside your personal evolution? My personal egg, caterpillar, cocoon, butterfly. So my Bosch egg is un starting to uh, unravel. Oftentimes, finding your purpose within your community and the parallels with your inner journey can provide great relief and meaning. So coming back to my devil card, stepping out of the boundaries within which are created around me, I am bringing into the community or a community around me, bringing, perhaps you are my community, and bringing my community with me on this journey and um, stepping into perhaps who I am going to 
become now because you know we aren't a stationary object we are forever evolving that's my spread that was um oh yeah 45 minutes that was a long one i am sorry and then just to wrap up i did creating a tarot card so i'm still in the early stages of drawing it but these are symbols that came intuitively to me that i just put on my piece of paper now i don't know what i'm going to do with this card whether i'm going to draw it um, as a permanent painting in a book or if I will actually turn it into a card that goes into a deck I don't know but um this one relates specifically to this spread to be honest with you so um this card is specifically for this person I guess is what I'm saying so yeah so there we go um I don't know if any of that's going to make sense to you but if it doesn't like I say go and see Elaine's videos she makes a lot more sense out of all of this than I am um, maybe in about three months time I might give you an update on where I've got to with this I don't know that it's gonna be a monthly thing just because of how I'm traveling through the journey on my own but I wish you all much luck much love and um, highly recommend getting out your ancestral grimoire and going on a little journey of divination for yourselves until we meet again take care bye-bye